I'd like to talk for just a few minutes about John Wesley and preaching, or as Wesley said himself, offering Christ, offering Christ. John Wesley wrote in a letter once, I do indeed live by preaching. I do indeed live by preaching. Preaching for John Wesley was not something he took up and put down. It wasn't something that he thought about occasionally. It wasn't just a skill that he mastered and a technique that he polished. It was a way of being and a way of living. He saw himself called to the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ, to a way of salvation that was all of God, it was of grace from beginning to end, and he saw that as the great joy of his life. When John Wesley talked to Methodist preachers, and it's interesting that as the Methodist movement grew and spread, those who were its leaders were not called priests, as they were in the Church of England, and they weren't called pastors as they were in the Lutheran tradition and the Reformed tradition on the continent, Wesley referred to them as preachers. Early Methodism was a preaching movement. It was driven by the Word of God, risen Lord Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit. And so when Wesley talked with his preachers and he gathered them together on an annual basis, and at the heart of their business was, what is it that we should be preaching and teaching? How should we be doing this in order to be faithful to the witness of Scripture, to the gospel, and the wholeness of the Christian life, holiness of heart and life? And what kind of people must we be and become in order to be faithful to this task and effective in its work? Those are the kinds of things they talked about when they gathered on an annual ba basis. They took minutes. They took notes. They were very, very careful about writing down everything that, that came up in their conversations. And, and so we have those now preserved for us. Uh, we can read minutes from those early conferences. Uh, those of us who are United Methodists still go to annual conferences. But we can read in those minutes the kinds of questions they asked. These are the kinds of things that Wesley wanted to know about his preachers to verify, to bear to evidence, give evidence that they were truly called of the Spirit to preach Jesus Christ. He wanted to know, first and foremost, if they knew God as a loving and pardoning God. He wanted to know if they knew Jesus Christ in the fullness of his work as prophet, priest, and king. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in just a minute. He wanted to know if their life demonstrated sound judgment and wisdom and understanding in the Christian faith and the Christian life so they could, through their sermons, communicate or convey the faith of the church and then guide those people who were listening more deeply into the way of Christ all the way into the fullness of sanctification or holy love. And so it's very interesting when you read these minutes, they didn't ask questions like, do they have a pleasing personality? Do they have good technique? Do the people like them? They were interested in the ways in which preachers' lives and words were attuned to the life and the work of Jesus Christ, because that's what makes a preacher. In other words, they were interested in the way they were being transformed by the very word they preached, the word made incarnate or flesh in Jesus Christ, the word God the Father speaks in the power of the Spirit. Now, Wesley said, offer Christ in his fullness, and we still can learn much from Wesley's preaching wisdom. He showed that in the New Testament, Christ was presented as the prophet, he who proclaims the will of God and the wisdom of God, and that as teacher, we can believe and take to heart all that he says as the very speaking of God. He spoke of Christ as the priest, the one who through his whole ministry 
his loving obedience to the Father, which is summed up through his death on a cross as a living sacrifice of love, mediates God's grace to us in the great gift of salvation from sin and evil and death, which then provides us and opens up the way into the fullness of eternal life, which is to share in God's own life in the form of Jesus through the power of the Spirit. And he spoke of him as king, one who rules, who rules by serving, one who serves by loving, one who loves by sharing and walking with us and directing us into the fullness of all the gifts and blessings that God has bestowed upon the whole world and all humanity through the gospel. Now, he was very careful about this, and when he went around and listened to preachers, he listened for the prophet, the priest, and the king. It's easy to limit our preaching to only the priest, Christ died for our sins. Perhaps only the prophet, this is what Jesus says. Or the king, this is what Jesus is, how Jesus is leading us and directing us, and this is what Jesus wants us to do. But none of the three are sufficient in themselves. There's a wholeness about God's great gift of salvation that is, comes to us, that is, it's mediated to us, shared with us through the person and the work of Jesus Christ, who is prophet, priest, and king. So if you're a preacher, I encourage you to look at Wesley and think about the fullness of his preaching wisdom. And if you're a listener, I encourage you to listen to sermons and, and, and look and listen and see if you can hear the distinctive marks of the prophet and the priest and king, the one who is God's great gift of himself to us, who satisfies all of the desires of our lives.